Hi and good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whenever you happen to be watching this. Again, thank you for joining us in a, another journey down Scripture Road. Um, today, our topic's on prayer. So, let's think about prayer. God, please help me pass this test. Dear God, can I please have a baby brother? Dear God, can I have a baby sister? Dear God, can they please take it back? Dear God, if you do this, I promise this. Dear God, if you can only do this, then I promise that I'll do this. Dear God, get me out of this fight alive. Dear God, why can I not have a child? Dear God, Please, cure me of this cancer. Dear God, why me? Now, have you ever made a prayer such as this? Do you know people who've made prayers such as this? We smile at the first ones because we can imagine how those go and they're so cute. And we smile at that. And, and we, and we kind of even smile at the other ones because we know we've kind of done it. We've kind of bargained with God, if you will. And then we kind of really hurt because we can feel the pain of the third ones. Now these, these, these prayers are prayers of entreaty and just a couple of words. And there's nothing wrong with those because, you know, the prayers... But let's talk a little bit more about prayer beyond just that. We as a nation have the freedom to choose to worship who and how we, we choose to. But overall, we're considered a Christian nation. But sadly, as a Christian nation, only about 55% of those pray daily. Now, a funny, neat fact about that, though, is... Get this, 20% of the people who pray daily don't belong to any organized religion, don't believe in any particular god or goddesses or you name it. They don't know who they pray to, but 20% pray daily. It's because we're made to pray. To be fair, in the time we have together, I'm not going to be able to do justice to the topic of prayer. So I'm only going to touch in on a few items that we have here today. But to give you an idea, prayer, just the various forms of prayer, is mentioned 335 times in 325 verses in the Bible. And that's not even counting the different words that are synonyms for the word prayer. Now, the prayers that I spoke of in the beginning, they were prayers of entreaty. Um, or otherwise known as Hail Mary prayers. Not for the Virgin Mary, but for the football pass of the same name. But then again, it got its name from saying Hail Mary full of grace. So I guess, yes, it is named after the Virgin Mary. There's many different kinds of prayers. There's, there's prayers of intercession. There's prayers of blessing. There's prayers of repentance. And there's prayers for guidance. And some people want to pray aloud. Some people want to pray quietly to themselves. Some will pray standing. Some will pray sitting. Some will pray kneeling. Some will pray lying prostrate on the ground. Scripture talks about all these different forms of prayer. And prayer is a time of communication with God where we come to Him before Him and speak out to Him what we have. It's a time to communicate. He gave us prayer to communicate with Him. And at, as well as communicating to Him, though, via the Holy Spirit, we need to be ready to listen to Him. Now, do I think he's going to come down and light up a burning bush next to you to speak to you like he did with Moses? No, I don't think he's going to do that. Matter of fact, he doesn't even need a bush in all honesty. He could just poof, put up a fire right there and say, hey, how you doing? 
But I don't think he's going to do that. As we listen for the Holy Spirit, though, and as we are guided by the Holy Spirit, I want to say something real quick. If you feel you're being led by the Holy Spirit to do something, if it's against Scripture, then you're listening to yourself and not the Holy Spirit. Now, so since the Bible is our guide for prayer and such, we're going to reach into the Bible and see what it has to say. Pick out some scripture that, that showcases prayer. Now, wait a minute, you say. I don't know anything about prayer. That's fair. And that's why we're doing this. And I have two scriptures to give you to help you begin your prayer walk with God. So the first one is in Romans 8.26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. The Holy Spirit will step in, will be by our side, and will pray with us and for us if we let Him. Then there's a prayer that Jesus himself taught his disciples when they asked, Lord, how do we pray? Teach us to pray. You may even know this one. It's called the Lord's Prayer. Matthew 6, 9 through 13. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. By kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one so as you begin your prayer life and your communications with God as you are uncertain of yourself lean into these two scriptures use the Lord's Prayer let the Holy Spirit pray with you and pretty soon though Prayer is going to be as natural to you as talking on the cell phone. Except you won't have to worry about your reception and how many bars you got. He's got perfect reception at all times. You don't have to worry about a dead spot. He's got the best communications network out there. When you're everywhere, you just can't beat that. Now, we're going to pause real quick and we're going to do a couple little quick fun facts for you. So, when I was trying to look up some information about prayer, I found two interesting facts that really highlight that we talk about in prayer, but it highlights scripture elsewhere. And so in that, so we have a demographic, first of all, broke down by income. Now, of those who make 30000 or less, typically speaking, 38% tend to pray daily. Of those who make 100000 or more, only 15%, more than half of that, less than half of that, I should say, pray daily. That kind of aligns with what we're told in Scripture about the rich. Let me share that with you. Luke 18, 24, 25. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard is it for the rich to enter into the kingdom of God? Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter into the kingdom of God. Now, don't get me wrong. We're not picking on rich people. And rich people can and do get into heaven. What it's talking about is, is the sad fact that as a person is richer and richer, they tend to rely on their riches and not God. The money has a tendency to turn them away from God and the Lord. They tend to rely on that. And that is where we want to warn everybody. Do not let the riches of the world turn you from God. Continue to be in there. The second demographic also... This one's on education. Those with a high school diploma or even less, 48% pray daily. Of those who are postgraduate, think like university professors and all of those, only 9% pray daily. 9%. Six 
sadly, their pride of superiority of their intellect to think that the education that men have by other mere men makes them superior to what God can teach us and show us. They tend to rely on their intellect, the superiority of their intellect, or supposed superiority, and not on God. Isaiah 29.14 Therefore, once more, I will astound these people with wonder upon wonder. The wisdom of the wise will perish. The intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. Remember, God made everything. He knows. We don't. All right, fun fact time over. Let's jump back in. So, James, who's the brother of Jesus, as we learned in our last one, um, he had something to say about prayer. So, this is what he says about prayer. In James 5, 13 through 18, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful. It is effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And for three and a half years, it did not rain. And then he prayed, and then it began to rain, and the earth produced its crops. Now, if you know how this winter and spring's been, we could have used some Elijah praying on the weather then. Let me tell you, what does all that say about prayer? That's some mighty powerful things there in prayer. So we're almost out of time. So just a couple more things we're going to touch on. We're going to touch on real quick on how not to pray, how to pray, and where your heart is when you pray. So jumping back into Matthew, we're going to see it Matthew 6.6. 6. When you pray, go into your room and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret, He will reward you. Here's how to not pray. In Matthew 6, 5, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received the reward in full. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison. This is what you need to think about when you're praying. Where is your heart? Luke 18, 10, 14. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood off by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like these other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector, he stood off at a distance. He wouldn't look up to heaven. He beat upon his breast and said, God, please have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those that humble themselves will be exalted. Keep in mind your heart. Keep in mind the will of God. If you pray in accordance with the will of God, I won't promise you that every prayer will be answered, nor necessarily that it will be answered in the way that you want it to be answered in. But I firmly believe that prayer is answered. Myself, I battled with pornography. I battled with lust of the flesh when I first became a Christian. And I prayed for over a year, Dear God, please help me fight this battle because it's a horrible battle. I want to follow you, but I have this weighing me down. Unbeknownst to me, the leader of the group that I was with, he selected out a, a study that we were to do called Every Man's Battle. And between my continued praying and this that came to me a year later, 
Every day is a new battle. Every day is a, is a new fight. But with my prayer and with the knowledge that I gained from that and that answered prayer, I win more and more of these battles every day. So since this is a topic of prayer, we're going to finish it off with a prayer. Now, if you would, take a moment, and I ask that you would please bow your heads with me in prayer. Dear God, Heavenly Father, I ask you to be with each of us as we come to you, perhaps unsteadily in our prayer walk with you, that you steady us as you walk with us, beside us, as we lift up our hearts, needs, and desires, you know them well. You know them even better than we do. We ask that you help us pray in accordance with your will, that our prayers may be answered, and that each time that we come to you, Father, that you embolden our speech, that we may feel confident in our prayer talk with you, and that by that way we may share and pray with and for others. And it is in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, whom came to earth for us, that while we were separated from you, to bring us back to you. Amen. And if you haven't yet made your commitment to Jesus, I ask that you consider to do that. And again, we stand ready to help you in that walk. Consider it. Pray about it. And let's start your walk with Christ. And I want to thank you for watching. And until next time, good day, God bless, and safe driving.